Well, the idea, the name Chula Trap refers to the fact that in India, uh, for 30 years, the same number of people are still using open biomass stoked chulas with biomass fuel. There were 700 million 30 years ago, 700 million 20 years ago, 7 million 100 million 10 years ago. But there's been, in spite of the fact, there's been a lot of development in India. And of course, the population growth means that there are more people using clean fuels. There are now, well, 12 to 500 million people using clean fuels. But there's an absolute number that seem to be caught in a trap they can't get out of. They're not getting clean fuels. So that's, uh, and this is true globally too. In the, in the world, there are about 2.8 billion people using biomass fuels today, and there were 2.8 billion people using biomass fuels 20 years ago. So, um, but that's different in different parts of the world. In Africa, it's going up. There are actually more people. Mm -hmm. China is going down. India is staying the same. So it depends on the place. Well, of course, the basic problem is poverty, um, and there's still a lot of poor people in India. But I've been to places, um, for example, visited Gujarat, where I worked 30 years ago, and then went back again last year. And a lot of development there. I mean, they have 24-7 electricity. The villages I worked in had, um, you know, all had clean water, piped water. They had latrines. They had paka, more paka houses, um, satellite dishes, cell phones. But they still had chulas. Right. So somehow chulas, I mean, the cooking has become disconnected in parts of the country with development. And um, I don't know exactly. Uh, I, I, mean, I have some suspicions. I think, I mean, there's some sort of, I don't know what you'd say, negative um, impressions on the status of women, for example. Um, you know, maybe um, the, um, uh, not the, relatively poor access that people have to clean fuels, the lack of electricity in much of the country, um, because there are a lot of cooking processes that can be done with electricity. Uh, even if you don't, your stove isn't electric, you can have an electric water heater, an electric rice cooker, an electric mixer, you know. Um, so uh, I'm not exactly sure, but it's, it's, I mean, you can look at the other side. There used to be only 100 million people with clean fuels, now there are 500 million people with clean fuels. Hmm. So that's positive, but there should be more. You know, they should be dip, dipping down into this. I mean, the clean fuel use should be dipping down into the 700 million. So this is, uh, I think we need a, I mean, a, just basically a new way of looking at this entirely, a completely different approach than we've had in the, in before. Well, there are basically two approaches we've, um, Three approaches, if you like, you wait for people to get rich, but that hasn't worked. Okay, so uh, the second approach is to make the available clean, that is to make biomass stoves cleaner. Uh, because we now know that the smoke from the biomass is quite damaging to health. About a million premature deaths a year in India, uh, with highest risks in women and children, but still impacts on men. And um, uh, so and it's very difficult to burn biomass cleanly, and the, and the so-called improved stove programs haven't really yet accomplished much. That's not to say there hasn't been progress, and there may be more progress. So I'm not say don't work on that, but I'm just saying we should open up another approach, and I call making that the clean available instead of making, and that means we know what's clean: it's electricity and, and most importantly, gas. It's what you use. It's what I use. Uh, why shouldn't rural people? Um, and partly it's a um, the barrier is cost, uh, but we subsidize LP, you in the India subsidizes LPG, um, so it's it's more affordable. Uh, that subsidy, unfortunately, is most goes mostly to um, you and me. It goes to people who don't need it. It's got to be an expectation by the population. But the urban rich or not even rich middle class can't doesn't need it. So one of the approaches is to try to move that subsidy more targeted to the poorer populations mm -hmm. and expand the access to LPG. So part of the problem is cost, but part of the problem is access. In Delhi, you can, on your smartphone, order your LPG and it's delivered the next day. In a village, you have to you know, send, go 10 kilometers and bring it back on your bicycle and to make the guy may not be there when you get there. You know, it's very, it's, it was not just cost is it, uh, accessibility and so um, like and then then there's the electrification problem when I visit Gujarat Kerala mm -hmm. 
uh, states that have good electricity, there's a lot of electric uh, cooking devices coming in. So, and that hasn't been available in the rural areas. So, um, so th those are some of the barriers we see. Well, I'm a health person, health scientist, and um, you know we look at um, uh, costs of uh, health protective um, technologies for the poor in a different way, perhaps. Uh, for example, we we're quite happy to pay for the vaccines for the poor, or the uh, even the uh, the primary health care for the poor, or the care for pregnant women, or antibiotics, or you know sanitation, uh, clean water, because these are public benefits, social benefits, but I don't call them subsidies, we call them social investments. And they are social investments. Uh, and everybody in India has a stake for a, in a healthy population. We subsidize, we pay for schools, you know, we don't call those subsidies, that's part of infrastructure for the government. So the issue is whether LPG, or a clean cooking, uh, could be part of that same mindset. So it's not subsidy. It's just giving people what they can't afford until they get, not forever either, as soon as they're wealthy enough, they buy their own. Right, right now, we want them to be healthy, so we help them buy it. And other countries do this too. The country of Ecuador moved everybody to LPG. It's the poorest country in South America, the most rural country. And um, they moved everybody away from biomass to LPG, but they're a big subsidy involved. So, um, you know, there is, um, there's a cost to it. Yeah. And the poor can pay part of it, but they can't pay all of it. Well, one of the areas of research of mine is the air pollution conditions in villages and what happens when you put in a change in, this, in the fuels. And one of the things we've learned is that, well, I mean, if you think about it, you have a village and you Let's say you become interested in LPG, you go buy, buy LPG, does your pollution level go down? No, because everybody around you, all your neighbors are still cooking with open fire. So you have to, I think we need to move to village level or community level interventions where you change out everybody. Now that's the type of intervention we don't know much about in terms of households, but other, the sanitation people do this. The same thing with sanitation. If one person has a latrine, and everybody else is still defecating in the fields, it makes no difference in terms of the health situation. You've got to get everybody, or nearly everybody, to change. I mean, after all, if only, you know, 30% of the people in Delhi were defecating around, it wouldn't be a healthy place, even though 65% were using the toilet. So you, you've got to make it clean. And I think that's the same with um, uh, pollution in villages. So that's something we're learning how to do. We don't yet know how to change over a whole village. But the advantage to it, uh, one advantage to it is that you can uh, <clears throat> you can use social you can unleash social pressure. So just as um, in the case of um, cigarette smoking uh, or anti-tobacco activities, what's the first and most important anti-tobacco anti action that's taken is smoking bans in public places because it changes the social context. Smokers start feeling guilty about smoking. So I was sitting. Um, next to a young man in the metro, in Delhi Metro, and he was fondling his cigarettes. He clearly couldn't wait to smoke. But he didn't smoke, not because it said no smoking, because everybody in the car would jump on him if he smoked, which is good. So we need to have that, uh, I think, for chulas, but you don't have to smoke, but you do have to cook. So you have to provide all the other women in, in the village, you know, access to something clean. Mm -hmm. Then, they, if they light up their dirty stove, their neighbors can complain. You change the social context, it's just like defecating. You change the social, no longer socially acceptable to defecate in the fields. So I've been told by a, a behavioral scientist that no, there's never been a successful um, behavior change on the population level without social pressure. Of course, um, uh, cleaning up um, the household combustion has um, obvious advantages to the household and it has advantages to the near neighbors, but also advantages to India itself because the household, dirty fuels and households are responsible for about a quarter of the outdoor air pollution and particle, small particle pollution in the country. So Delhi can't get completely clean unless you clean up the, you know, the households upwind or in, in, even in the city. So there's a, that's a win-win. Uh, another is, you know, there's um, 
uh, the terrible use of time and women, you know, gathering fuels and so forth. Well, you, LPG is pretty easy compared to that. Or electricity, I mean, you just turn on and turn off. So she doesn't have to waste any time gathering fuel. That's a benefit. Um, the uh, and then there's some cli potential climate benefits too, um, because these dirty stoves produce a lot of um, greenhouse-related pollutants. And so you can cut those back to, they're part of outdoor air pollution too, but you can reduce, for example, the black carbon that comes off and they drop on the glaciers in the Himalayas and accelerate their warming and I mean, their melting and things like that. So there's a lot of actually benefits. Well, I mean, India has done um, quite uh, two innovative things. Um, um, they've uh, the Ministry of Health in India, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, is now has a task force on air pollution. It's the first Ministry of Health in the world that ever to do this. My Ministry of Health in the U.S. doesn't pay attention to air pollution. It's done by the Environment Ministry, and uh, so that's a good thing uh, that the Health Ministry is taking up. But they have they're going to develop some recommendations and so forth. Uh, I think informed by the information that, like the anti-tobacco um, campaign and so forth. The other thing is the Ministry of Petroleum here has got a plan to greatly improve the access to LPG among poor populations, partly by targeting the subsidies, but moving the tar subsidies from the rich, giving them to the poor, mm -hmm. which don't need it, or they don't need it anymore. They used to, but now they're developed. They should be proud to you know, give up their subsidy and let it, let it go to where it's needed. And then when those poor people get developed, the subsidy can go away. <laughs> it doesn't have to be forever. So those are big initiatives in India that you know, could make a, a really big difference. Well, the best fuels are gaseous fuels. I mean, LPG is one, but the biogas and, um, you know, and pipe natural gas, these are great fuels too. So if you can possibly uh, move to those and protect yourself and your family. Electricity is good, but not reliable in many places. And then, then there are advanced um, stoves that use biomass that are much cleaner than the traditional ones. That would be the next, uh, if you can't get gas or electricity.